not fair. Is Maxwell House really the only coffee in the world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. <laughs> Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as Father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by America's favorite coffee, Maxwell House. The coffee that's always good to the last drop. Music hath charms to soothe the savage breast, to soften rocks or bend a knotted oak. You've heard that before, haven't you? Always thought it was just about right, didn't you? Well, it doesn't always work that way. Not in Springfield, at least, in the white frame house on Maple Street. Not with the Andersons. No, sir, not by a long shot. Like this. Margaret! I'm in the dining room, dear. Margaret, it's wonderful. Wait till you hear what I've done. Uh, where are the kids? They're upstairs. Jim, what is it? Honey, it's sensational. It's terrific. This is the biggest day of my whole life. Jim, put me down, please. Say, you're putting on a little weight, aren't you? <laughs> I am not. What's all the excitement about? Well, you know that group insurance plan I've been trying to work out with Henry Liggett? Yes. It's in. No. Yes, sir. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Oh, Jim, how wonderful. And that isn't all. How would you like to go to the Toscanini concert? Toscanini and the NBC Symphony Orchestra. Jim, you didn't pay that broker $12.50 a ticket. For $3 seats? I should say not. Anytime you find me paying a broker a bonus of $9.50 a ticket... But you said you couldn't buy tickets. You can't. They're all sold out. Then I don't understand. If you can't buy tickets... We're going as the honored guests of Mr. and Mrs. Henry Liggett. How do you like that? But, Jim... I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's all so wonderful, the insurance and the concert. I, I've got to get a new dinner dress. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just can't go anywhere in that old one. You don't mind, do you, dear? Of course not. Go get two dinner dresses. What do I care? Oh, I'll, I'll go downtown first thing in the morning and... Oh, dear, I wonder if there'll be time. When is the concert? You'll have lots of time, honey. It isn't until next Thursday. Good. Then I can go to Gorman's. Jim, it can't be Thursday. Why not? We're having the Gribbles for dinner on Thursday, and then we're going dancing at the townhouse. I made the date just two days ago. I told you. Not for Thursday. Margaret, no. You... you couldn't. But I did. Oh. Mrs. Gribble wanted to make it Tuesday, but we couldn't because the Smiths are coming on Tuesday. You said we didn't have anything else to do on Thursday anyway, so we made it then. Margaret, how could you have done a thing like that? How could you? Jim Anderson, don't you dare blame this on me. You were the one who suggested Thursday. Oh, honey, what are we going to do? There's only one thing we can do. You've got to call Henry Liggett and tell him we're sorry. Margaret, I can't. It's a big theater party, and I just sold the man a half a million dollars worth of insurance. Now, how can I insult him that way? Well, would you rather insult Mr. Gribble? Of course not. I'm still trying to sell him on the group insurance deal. <laughs> Jim, it's an accepted fact that no one can be in two places at the same time. Well, let's not get excited. Let's sit down and see if we can't figure something out. If it were only the Smiths, at least they'd understand. That's it, the Smiths. I don't mind insulting them. Jim! I mean, well, I can explain to Heck, and they can come over here for dinner some other time. I think you're forgetting one thing, Jim. We're having the Smiths for dinner because Elizabeth's cousin Maud is in town. When we were visiting the bakers in Lakeside... She was very nice to us, I know. But that's still no reason why they can't make it some other night. Hiya, Dad. I didn't know you were home. I'll explain the whole thing to Heck. Then we can have them for dinner on, say, uh, Wednesday. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? No, I suppose not. Hiya, Dad. I didn't know you were home. Then I can call Gribble and change their date to Tuesday. <laughs> now, you see how simple it is? Jim, I think Bud wants to say something. What is it, Bud? Hiya, Dad. I didn't know you were home. <laughs> now, there's an interesting observation. Are there any other vital pronouncements you'd like to make before we continue? Well, just about next Thursday. What about next Thursday? Is it all right if I take the car before dinner instead of after dinner? 
You see, I promised Joe Phillips... But I meant to tell you, Thursday is out. You can't have the car at all. I can't? But it's Thursday. It's my day. Well, I'm very sorry, Eleanor, but it's out. <laughs> I'll explain the whole thing to you some other time But I always get the car on Thursday I made a date Well, this will teach you not to make dates on Thursday They're nothing but trouble <laughs> Mother! What is it, Betty? Is Father home? Yes, dear I'll be right down Don't do me any favors Stay where you are <laughs> Hi, Daddy You too if I can't have the car on Thursday, when can I have it? I don't know, but I have a great many things on my mind. But I... you said I could have it on Thursday. That's why I made the date. Your father made two dates. He did? Father, do you... No. What? I said no. Whatever it is, no. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you. <laughs> You're just the sweetest father in the whole world. What? Mother said she thought you would, but you don't, and it's just wonderful. What's wonderful? I don't what? Mind if I go to the Pie Mew dance? Wait till I tell Janie Liggins... Betty, wait a minute. I didn't say you could go to the dance. I didn't say anything. Why, Father, you just said... I said no. That's what I said. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Oh, go away. Jim, I don't think that's very nice. You'll gain nothing by losing your temper. Well, why shouldn't I lose my temper? At this rate, how am I ever going to get straightened out about Thursday? How did you know it was Thursday? How did I know what was Thursday? <laughs> the Pie Mew dance. Oh, no. No. This was such a nice day. Everything was going so well. Betty, your father and I have a very difficult problem to work out. So why don't you and Bud and Kathy go back upstairs? I'll call you when dinner's ready. He said I could have the car every Thursday. <laughs> Why should he change his mind now? Go ahead, bud. Father. Not now, Betty. But, Mother. I said not now. Jumping creepers. What are you kicking about? I can't even have the car. Daddy. What is it, Kathy? I don't have any place to go on Thursday. <laughs> That's fine, baby, fine. <laughs> But when I get to be a big girl... Never mind, Kathy. Just go upstairs. But I wanted to tell him... Go upstairs. Gee whiz. You know, Margaret, I've been thinking, what if Hector says they won't change the date? I don't see any reason why he should. No, but what if he does? Then what am I going to do? What are you going to do now? I'm going to call him, and if he says no, so help me, I'll never speak to him again. Turn a man down when he asks a simple thing like that. After all the things I've done for him, a fine friend he turned out to be. Jim, he hasn't said no. Well, he'd better not. Hello, Heck. This is Jim Anderson. Now look, Heck. Uh, what? Oh, uh, no, Heck. I'm not upset about anything. I just, uh, well, look, Heck, I'm in an awful spot. Yes, you see, we've got dates with the Gribbles and the Liggetts for the same night, and, well, we didn't do it on purpose. Look, Heck, is it all right with you if we make our date for a different night next week? Well, then I can switch the date with the Gribbles over to Tuesday, and I'll be in the clear. Okay. What did he say, dear? He's going to ask Elizabeth. Jim, why don't you explain to him that it's a matter of business? He knows that, Margaret. Sit around this house for weeks, nothing to do, no place to go, and then all of a sudden, everything has to happen on one night. <laughs> yes, Heck? You can? Oh, that's fine, Heck. That's wonderful. I knew I could count on you. What? Well, how about a week from tonight? Yes, that's definite, Heck. No. <laughs> no, we won't change it again. Oh, sure. I realize you've got to plan ahead on account of Maud. Well, uh, tell her we said hello, will you? Thanks, Heck. Okay, pal. A week from tonight. Well, that's more like it. Now, when I get the gribbles moved over to Tuesday... Is everything all right, Jim? Uh, Heck said they'd be glad to change it. Now I'm calling the gribbles. You see, there was no reason to get all worked up that way. Ask Mrs. Gribble... Just a minute, honey. Oh, no, not you, Mrs. Gribble. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to... What? She isn't? Well, may I speak to Mr. Gribble? Oh, they are? I see. Well, uh... uh no, I'm afraid that'll be too late. Uh, just leave word that Mr. Anderson called. 
Thank you. Good night. What did Mrs. Gribble say, dear? She didn't say anything. She and Mr. Gribble went away for a few days. They won't be back until Monday. Oh, dear. Who are you calling now? Hello, Heck. Look, Heck, if you want to leave that Tuesday date the way it was... <laughs> well, the Gribbles won't be back until Monday, and... Oh, you did, huh? You did what, Jim? They've already made another date for Tuesday. <laughs> with the Hathaways. Heck, we'll just leave it the way it is, uh, a week from tonight. Okay, Heck, and, and I'm sorry there's been all this mix-up. Right. Oh, sure. Okay, Heck, see you later. A fine little fixer I turned out to be. All I did was move the date with the Smiths from Tuesday to Wednesday. And we've still got two dates for Thursday. Jim, I'm completely confused. Well, climb in with me. <laughs> I've been that way all day. But you told Hector our date was a week from tonight. That's what I said, Wednesday. Jim, today is Thursday. Margaret, I may be a little mixed up about a lot of things, but today is Wednesday. Yesterday was Wednesday. Yesterday was Tuesday. They picked up the garbage this morning, and they don't pick up the garbage on Wednesday. <laughs> I don't care when they pick up the garbage. I had a date with Al Harris on Wednesday, and... Uh, today is Thursday? It's been Thursday all day. Margaret. Yes, Jim? I have news for you. We no longer have two dates for next Thursday. Oh? We have three. <laughs> Well, that's really no news to Mother. She knew Father was getting things in a stir. You know, he needs to remember something most of us have found out one time or another. It pays to stop and think a little before you do most anything. I'd say even before you buy a pound of coffee. Think about what you want in that coffee. It's flavor, the most in flavor for your money. And right there, you'll see the reason why, day after day, more people buy and enjoy our Maxwell House coffee than any other brand. That wonderful good-to-the-last-drop flavor. Why, you just can't get enough of it. You won't find that famous flavor in any other coffee you know. No coffee but Maxwell House. And here's why. We have a recipe, and a mighty important recipe it is, because it calls for certain special varieties of coffees to be blended together a special way. It's the one way, the one recipe for that wonderful good-to-the-last-drop flavor. That's why our Maxwell House coffee spells so much more pleasure in every cup, so much more flavor in every pound. So for your money's worth and more, in real enjoyment, open up a pound of Maxwell House coffee. Always good to the last drop. <laughs> It's mere moments later in the white frame house on Maple Street. The Andersons' problem still remains. Three dates for Thursday. Yet there isn't the dark and dismal aura of gloom one might imagine. Jim Anderson, a genius among fathers, has come up with an idea which he himself admits is a dilly, like this. Margaret, it's the only thing we can do. Would you rather see Henry Liggett cancel the whole deal? Of course not. All right. And what's more natural than telling him we'd rather let Betty and Bud have the pleasure of going to the concert? Well, it just seems so hypocritical. Honey, this is not the time to think of ethics. We're in a jam, and we've got to get out of it. Now, will you call them, or do you want me to? I think you'd better call. All right. In a case like this, you have to take extreme measures, like uh, an operation or something. Well, I suppose there's nothing else we can do. But if you'd only asked me before you made the date... Well, I didn't, Margaret, so let's forget about it. Let's just hope I can sell Henry Liggett on the idea and we'll be all right. Oh, hello, Janie. Uh, this is Mr. Anderson. May I speak to your father? Thank you. Jim, something just occurred to me. Hmm? If Betty and Bud go to the concert and we go out with the Gribbles, what are we going to do with Kathy? Oh, we'll rent a cage for her at the zoo. <laughs> We'll get a sitter for her, Margaret. That's no problem. It certainly is. You know Kathy doesn't like sitters. Well, that makes it even. Sitters don't like Kathy. <laughs> you just have to find one who hasn't heard about her. 
Jim, it's not that bad. Kathy may be a little exuberant at times, Hello, but... Henry. Uh, Jim Anderson. Well, just fine, thank you. Say, uh, Henry, I've been talking to Margaret about this Toscanini concert, and uh, I wonder if you'd mind very much if we let Betty and Bud go in our place. Oh, no, it's just that, uh, well, we've heard Toscanini, and uh, Betty and Bud haven't, and... Uh... Oh, <laughs> it really isn't anything much, Henry. Just something that any parent would do. Of course. You see, I explained to Margaret... Jim! That is, uh, Margaret and I talked it over, and we both thought that Betty and Bud would gain so much by hearing the concert, and this is going to be his only appearance in Springfield, and, uh... Well, it's nice of you to say that, Henry, but you know how it is when you have children. <laughs> Jim, of all... Thank you very much, Henry. Well, I wish we could, too, but we'll have to make it some other time. Thanks again. Good night. Jim Anderson, in my whole life, I have never heard anything quite like that. If you don't mind, I'd rather not discuss it. There are things that uh, women just don't understand. And this is one of them. <laughs> it's power politics on a local scale, that's it. <laughs> and, well, let's just not discuss it. Betty? Betty? Jim, dinner isn't nearly ready. I know. Did you call me, Father? Come on downstairs. And uh, tell Bud I want him. Okay. Don't you think you ought to call the Smith? I'll call Hector first thing in the morning and get the whole thing straightened out. I'll be able to do more with him if he doesn't have Elizabeth around. You won't forget. Of course I won't forget. Dinner's ready, huh? No, dinner isn't ready, huh? But Betty said... I didn't say anything about dinner. I merely said Father wanted you. Don't you want me to, Daddy? Oh, Angel, this is something your father has to discuss with Betty and Bud. Can't I even listen? Of course you can listen, but listen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Daddy. Betty? Yes, Father. Bud? It's time dinner was ready. Bud. <laughs> oh, yes, Dad? I've got good news for you, for both of you. I just made arrangements for you to go to the Toscanini concert with the Liggetts. Now, what do you think of that? What time will dinner be ready? <laughs> Bud. Well, I just wanted to know. Bud, when are you going to learn that there are other things just as important as food? Like candy. <laughs> Kathy, please be quiet. Yes, Mommy. Is that all you wanted to tell us, Father? Uh, not quite. This concert is a very important event in Springfield, and I'll expect you to act sensibly and uh, with dignity. Yes, Father. I don't want to hear that either you or Bud went whooping around the lobby or did anything to disgrace the name of Anderson. Yes, Father. We want to be proud of you. And I think it might be a very good idea, Bud, if you had your hair cut before next Thursday. Okay, Dad. Thursday? Father, the concert isn't Thursday But that's the night of the Pine You dance Hey, I have a date too Betty, I explained to you I don't want to go to the concert Biggest dance of the whole year And you want me to go to a concert What are you talking about? They're having a night baseball game in Middletown And I promise you Wait a you'll... minute, wait a minute Bud, Betty, don't you understand This isn't just any concert this is Toscanini. I wouldn't care if it was Roy Bargy. <laughs> hey, how can you say that? I'd rather go to the dance. I'll go to the concert. <laughs> Look, Mr. Liggett is giving a tremendous theater party. Janie Liggett's going to the dance. It's her own father's party, and he isn't making her go to any old concert. It isn't a question of making anyone go anywhere. It's a privilege to hear Toscanini. They're charging $12.50 a ticket. People are fighting to get in. They don't have to fight with me. <laughs> I'll go to the concert. Margaret, will you please explain to these children? Oh, no, dear. Go ahead. You're doing fine. Thank you. Look, kids. Music is an important part of our lives, especially good music. An appreciation of music is a sign of culture and good breeding. It's a relaxation, a, a release from the stress and strain of everyday life. 
As you grow older? Daddy. Oh, what is it, Kathy? I'll go to the concert. <laughs> You'll stay home where you belong. I want to go to the concert. Ah! <laughs> Kathleen, be quiet. <laughs> Jim. Margaret, I'm trying to explain to the children. Jim, I may not know very much about power politics or business. But I do know Betty and Bud, and you're not going about this the right way. Oh? You have something better in mind? Yes. The truth. Margaret, this is no time... Betty? Bud? Your father and I find ourselves in a very embarrassing position. Margaret. Well, go ahead. We made dates with two different couples. To go to the concert with the Leggetts, and to have dinner with Mr. and Mrs. Gribble. All on the same night. Boy, who did that? <laughs> Never mind who did it. Just listen to your mother. And Kathy. Yes, Daddy. Blow your nose. <laughs> yes, Daddy. <laughs> That's our problem. Your father's in no position to offend either the Liggetts or the Gribbles. And that's why we need your help. If you'll go to the concert with Mr. and Mrs. Liggett, all our difficulties will be over. Well, creepers, why didn't father say so? I did say so. In a slightly different way. <laughs> Gosh, we didn't know you were in a spot. If going to the concert is going to help you any, well, gosh. Father, you know you can count on us. Candy Bud. Sure. Who cares about an old baseball game? I'll go to the baseball game. <laughs> Kathy, the way you can help us best is by staying home. Oh, then I'll be glad to, Mommy. <clears throat> well, I guess that takes care of that. Yes, dear. And I hope we've all learned something tonight. Yes. Well... I'll get it. Never mind, Betty. Go in and help your mother set the table. And Betty? Yes, Father? Maybe we can find a new dress somewhere that's just right for concerts. Creepers! Hello? Oh, hello, Henry. She what? Oh, that's fine, Henry. That's just fine. Yes, I'll tell Margaret right away. She'll be very happy. Thank you very much, Henry. Yes, we'll be seeing you. Good night. Who was that, dear? That was Henry Liggett, and he was so happy about everything. Jim, nothing's gone wrong with the insurance deal, has it? Oh, no, everything's fine, just great. Why, Jim, what is it? Mrs. Liggett thinks we're wonderful, the most thoughtful parent she's ever known. So she wants us to have something she dug up this afternoon. Two more tickets for the concert. <laughs> Wait till you hear where she got them. It seems a friend of hers couldn't make it on account of she's going out for dinner that night. Jim, not... Uh-huh. She got them from Mrs. Gribble. Oh, no. And Father thought he had everything all straightened out, too. Well, some things you just can't count on. Other things, though, you can count on every time. And it's good to know about them. Take coffee, for instance. You want to count on the coffee you buy for wonderful flavor every pound. Because flavor is what you pay for, what you enjoy. And as millions of folks know, wonderful flavor is just what you can count on with our Maxwell House coffee. Day after day, pound after pound... An extra measure of flavor comes your way in that familiar blue tin. Wonderful, good-to-the-last-drop flavor only Maxwell House brings you. We're mighty proud of that flavor, you know. It's the reason more people buy our Maxwell House coffee than any other brand. And we'll never compromise on the quality of one single pound. Yes, for more flavor for your money, for your money's worth and more, bring home that familiar blue tin of Maxwell House coffee. It's today's Coffee Buy. Always good to the last drop. Mm -hmm. 
A week's gone by, and it's Thursday again. Springfield, in its best bib and tucker, is pouring into the local opera house for the highlight of the social year, the Toscanini concert. Inside, the orchestra is tuning up. But in the lobby, last-minute arrivals are still making their way into the auditorium, like this. Betty, go inside and tell Mr. Liggett we'll be in as soon as I get the Smiths and the Gribbles straightened out. Okay, Father. And uh, take Bud with you. Come on, Bud. Hurry up. I can't. Everybody's pushing me. Now, where did they go? Hector! Jim, please don't shout. Well, they can't get in. I've got all the tickets. I don't know. When the Smith showed up for dinner, too, I thought I'd die. Just die. Yes, Margaret, I know. You kept promising that you'd call them. I forgot, Margaret. And I just as soon you forgot. How can I ever forget all that good food in the icebox going to waste? I still think there was enough. For the Smiths and the Gribbles? Well... And why did we have to take them to the townhouse, the most expensive restaurant in Springfield? They enjoyed it, didn't they? Why shouldn't they? the end of this month, our budget is going to look like a Swiss cheese. Tickets, please. Kindly show your tickets at the door. Twelve dollars and fifty cents apiece for five tickets. Margaret. And dinner for the Gribbles and the Smiths. Margaret, there was nothing else we could do. Do you realize that tonight is costing us almost a hundred dollars? There they are. We're over here, Hector. Tickets, please. Kindly show your tickets at the door. Mrs. Gribble, here we are. Tuscanini, a hundred dollars. And less than two months ago, it only cost us five dollars to hear Spike Jones. <laughs> Good to the last drop. Now that famous flavor is yours to enjoy in instant coffee, too. Instant Maxwell House. It's the instant coffee with a famous flavor, the happiest combination in coffee. Wonderful flavor combined with the convenience and thrift of coffee made instantly in the cup. So thrifty, so easy, and best of all, so truly good. Tomorrow, try Instant Maxwell House, the instant coffee with a famous flavor, instantly good to the last drop. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson, with Roy Bargey and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Bill, is it all right if I step in here for a minute? Well, of course, Bob. What's on your mind? Well, there's a long Fourth of July weekend coming up, and I'd like to say a few words to the members of our Good Drivers Club. I've been looking at the figures compiled by the National Safety Council. 579 deaths over the Memorial Day weekend. And I'd like to remind our members once more of their pledge to drive safely and carefully. Look at the eight safe driving rules again. Talk them over with your parents. Explain them to others who may not have yet joined the club. Let's see if we can't save a few lives. Let's see if we can't make this the safest, sanest, and healthiest fourth on record. Let's just take it easy. Good night. Now until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee, always good to the last drop. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. Now stay tuned for Screen Guild Theater, which follows immediately over most of these stations. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.